Part 3 of this series will cover the remaining functions of Ready4. Check out Parts 1 and 2 for device pairing, mobile desktop, the red key setup for the ThinkPhone, and app streaming. Let's start with screen share mode. You get two options, mirror phone or virtual phone. You can initiate this mode from the desktops or the phones ready for app. Or if you've set up the red key for mirror phone, double click it to initiate on your phone and it will activate it on your desktop. But keep in mind that the red key setting won't do virtual phone, only mirror phone. What sets this apart from the app streaming is that this is a single window for all activities just like on your phone. This means there is a single window with home, back, and recent functionality. However, if you have the Android gestures navigation active, like swiping from the bottom up to go home, it's a bit cumbersome to navigate using only a mouse as you have to swipe up with a mouse precisely at the bottom of the window. If you have a touchscreen, this might function better. But I like to have my phone set to the three button navigation anyway, so for me it works fine because the screen buttons carry over to the desktop mirrored screen. I'm surprised they didn't just give it a toolbar with home, back, and recents, similar to what they do for app streaming or on the virtual screen that you'll see later. Again, mirror phone is just that, a direct mirror of your phone. If you pick up your phone and use it, the desktop window will mirror what's on the screen, and what you do on the desktop is visible on your phone. One cool thing you can try is to start the camera app and you'll have a viewfinder on your desktop window. You can use this like a Wi-Fi camera around the house. I find this mode useful if I'm working with files between multiple apps such as editing an image and then uploading it to a social media platform or backing it up to my cloud storage app. This mode has the most freedom of use and fewest compatibility issues since it simply displays what's on the phone. This mode is also ideal for presentations from your phone if you have your laptop projecting onto the big screen. For the virtual phone, it opens up a window and it's like a secondary screen for your phone. One thing to note is that the home function is limited to the default Motorola Moto Home Launcher. As you see on my phone, I use Microsoft Launcher. But on the second virtual screen, it's the Moto Home Launcher. If I switch to the Moto Home Launcher on the phone, there would be two Moto Home Launcher screens. The feature of this mode is that you can run your apps on your virtual phone window on your desktop and you can use your physical phone independently. However, opening an app on the other screen closes it on the other one. I've never used this mode extensively, but I can see some utility if you want to make calls while doing work with your apps running on the desktop. For the webcam, if you've never used this feature, it'll ask you to install the drivers for Windows. It'll do it automatically and you can just start it right after. My first impression was that it basically just uses your phone's camera and makes it available to Windows to use as a webcam. You can toggle to the front or rear camera as expected. However, Motorola has included some extra little features. Subject tracking tries to reposition the image to the main subject and it has some adjustability to its sensitivity. Although I find it makes more vertical adjustments than horizontal, it still kind of helps. But you could also use the blur background feature to hide what's behind you. It's a little rough around the edges as demonstrated, but people won't really be able to make out your background if you choose to do so. Video Mask lets you create a freeze frame or a three second video that loops back and forth. And it will loop that video to whoever it's broadcasting to. So if you're trying to look like as you're still there while you run to the restroom, this feature can help you. Be creative with this one. Camera zoom obviously controls the amount of zoom, while studio light turns on the rear flashlight LED if you were on the rear camera. It's grayed out for the front camera access. File transfers. This thing does one thing only. It opens up the Windows File Explorer and connects it to your phone's internal storage. It's simple and actually handy when needed. Full drag and drop plus file management access wirelessly or wired. For other file transfers, you can simply drag any file on the desktop to your phone picture in the Ready4 app on your desktop and it will be sent to your phone's download folder. On the phone side, when you hit the share function now, it has a link to Ready4 if connected. It will send the file over to the preset folder you set up on the Ready4 app on the desktop side. If you have multiple Ready4 devices set up like a laptop and a desktop or multiple laptops, you can choose where to send it to at this point. 
I find this to be pretty handy to send and receive files back and forth. The Smart Clipboard. This enables copying and pasting of text and images between ready for linked devices, whether it's a desktop or a phone. Keep in mind that you will need to make sure it's enabled on both sides as switching one on doesn't automatically enable the feature on every device. This is good for limiting who gets to share what if you have multiple linked computers or phones. I find this useful for sharing between devices without any copy and pasting to an email or instant message. You can also select from past copy and paste content as the Ready For app has a collection of what's been copied. As you see here, I've copied some text excerpts from the phone and it syncs to the laptop. From the laptop browser, I copy the URL and it syncs to the phone's clipboard. Now a screenshot from the laptop is synced. It's all stored in the Smart Clipboard section of the Ready4 app for later use. For the Hotspot feature. This function automatically starts up a hotspot between your phone and the desktop or laptop. I find this to be useful if only one device has internet and you need to share your internet, but this only works in wired mode. In this setup, the laptop has no internet connection. I connect my Ready4 phone with the USB cable and choose Ready4 as the connection type. Give it a few seconds to pair up the devices. Once synced, all Ready4 functions are now available between the two devices. Hit hotspot on the phone side and it will share the internet signal. This is great for traveling, and while it's possible to start a wireless hotspot within stock Android itself, this is a one-step process that makes everything easier. The PC lock feature. This lets you lock your PC from your phone. Maybe you're across the room or you're just not sure if your PC is locked. As long as the session is still active, it will lock your PC. There's another mentioned mode where it can connect to your tablet that's running the Ready4 Assistant app. It's supposed to let you run a virtual phone window on your tablet. Also gives it an internet signal by setting up a hotspot and lets you transfer files between them. Smart Clipboard is also supported. I have two tablets here, but only one of which was able to download and install the Assistant app. The one that did run it, the mirror window was very small, so it was not very usable. Motorola might not have developed this fully, but it's something to try out and see if it works for you. Hotspot works wirelessly this time because the tablet generates a QR code and you simply scan the code with your Ready4 phone. It will connect to the phone's hotspot automatically. The file transfer works just like it does described in the earlier segment. And Smart Clipboard is also available. You can see the copy and pasted items here too. Finally, if you don't have a desktop computer, you could directly connect your Ready4 phone to an HDMI monitor. This can be done with a basic USB-C to HDMI, or if your monitor supports USB-C video, USB-C to USB-C. I was able to use this typical USB-C hub with an HDMI output and USB-A ports with my standard USB wireless keyboard and mouse. The advantage to this is that this is a direct connection, so there is no wireless lag, and the feel is especially snappy. You get several options including a Microsoft 360 remote connection, the mobile desktop which has all the features that I've gone over in part 1, a TV feature where you get a full screen version of specific apps like YouTube or your video player like I have MX player. Video chat lets you open up your messaging app that has a video chat option. You can use this in combination with the Ready4 webcam. Game mode is similar to TV mode except you launch your favorite game in full screen. You get to select which games appear in this mode. And finally mirror mode which is just a mirror of your phone. Again the direct connection eliminates any lag that's present in the wireless or wired mode which runs inside another desktop computer. I bought this Motorola because of this feature alone. It gives a variety of different ways to interact with your phone while you're at home and you can choose what's best for what you use it for. Sure, you could accomplish some of these with third-party apps such as Visor or AirDroid, but from my experience, it's not a smooth connection process and there's multiple steps and you also need to pay a subscription fee for more advanced features. Having this included with your phone purchase is an appealing feature for me and differentiates these Motorola phones from an endless selection of the same old Android phones.